Okay guys, today we are going to do solving cube and square root equations. Before we even start, I want to ask you guys kind of a question. So if we have x squared equals y, and let's say I wanted to solve this for x, how would I get rid of this x exponent right here? What would I do? What's the opposite of squaring something? Yes, square rooting. So this little square and the square root cancel out, and you just have x equals the square root of y. Okay, now let me scoot my paper over and ask you something else. Let's say you have the square root of y equals x, and you want to solve this guy for y. What is the opposite of square rooting something? Yes, squaring something. So these would cancel out, and you'd have y equals x squared. So those are opposites of each other. Squaring something and square rooting something are opposites. Just like we have addition and subtraction are opposites, and multiplication and division are opposites. Um, let's try some examples. Let's try B. So, before you even start doing anything, you need to make sure that your square root is isolated, meaning it is by itself. So look at the square root. Is there anything over here beside it? Is there a plus something, a minus something, something in front of the square root, anything? No, there isn't. This is isolated. So, what is the opposite of square rooting something? Yes, squaring it. And remember, you got to do it to both sides. What you do to the left, you have to do to the right. So, what happens is the square root and the square, they cancel out. And over here, you just have negative 8 minus 2a. Over here, you have 2 squared, which is 4. Now, you just solve this like a regular math equation. So, I'm going to add 8 and add 8. And I'm going to get negative 2a is equal to 12. Divide by negative 2, and you get negative 6. Now, oops, let me scoot that over so you guys can see. Now, to find to see if it's an extraneous solution, what you would do is you would take this negative 6, and you would plug it back into the equation to see if it works. So I'm just going to use my crappy calculator, because that's the only one I have over here. So square root, negative 8 minus 2 times negative 6, and look what we get, 2, and that's what we're supposed to get, 2, so we know this answer is okay. All right, now over here, this one's kind of weird, 1 half, okay, let me tell you this, square root of x is the same thing as saying x to the 1 half, okay, because square root means 2, so there's kind of a little invisible 2 right here, and this is to the power of 1. So that's how we get 1 half. So again, anytime you see the 1 half, it just means square root. So if I was to rewrite this, this is x minus 5 is equal to the square root of 3x minus 11. These two things are the same. Okay, so it doesn't matter which way you write them. They are the same. So how, look over here. By the square root, is there anything around it? Any plusing of it, subtraction, multiplication? Is it isolated? Yes, it is. So what is the opposite of square rooting something? Yep, squaring it. So if I square it over here, I have to square it over here. All right, now let's rewrite this, because this little baby 2 just means you have two of these. So x minus 5, x minus 5. Now what happens over here? The little squared and the square root cancel, and you have 3x minus 11. Now over here I need a FOIL. You can distribute, or you can do the box. It's whatever you want. I'm going to do x times x, which is x squared, x times negative 5, 5x. Negative 5 times x, negative 5x. Negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. 3x minus 11 still. I'm going to combine like terms and get a negative 10x. And then I'm going to move everybody over to the left because I know I have this x squared, so that means that I'm probably going to have to factor here in a minute. So I'm going to subtract a 3x, and I'm going to add an 11. So subtract a 3x, add an 11. That makes all this go away over there. So now let's rewrite it. I'm going to rewrite it up here. x squared minus 13x plus 36. So again, we know we are going to factor, so I'm going to go ahead and get my chart going. 
36 on this side, negative 13 on this side. So let's do a little 9 and 4. Probably both negative. Go ahead and get your parentheses. X minus 4, X minus, or X minus 9, X minus 4. Okay, so remember, always comes out opposite. And then we want to check these to make sure they are okay. So I'm going to put the 9 in first. Okay, so 3 times 9 is 27 minus 11. 16, the square root of 16 is 4, so this side is 4. And then 9 minus 5 is 4, so 9 is okay. Let's put in the 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 minus 11 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. Now let's do the 4 over here. Uh-oh, what's 4 minus 5? Negative 1. So that one does not work. There's your extraneous solution right there. Because again, when I plug it in here, I do not get the same thing. Over here I get negative 1, and over here I get positive 1. So it does not work. So only 9 is actually a solution to this equation. All right, let's do this, this last one for square roots. Then we're going to switch over to cube roots. So do you see how there's a square root on the left and a square root on the right? Okay, so we need to square both sides so we can get rid of those. And I have 3k minus 11 equals 5 minus k. Because the square root and the little baby 2 cross out, square root, little baby 2 cross out. Now I'm just going to add k to both sides. And I get 4k minus 11 equals 5. I'm going to add 11 and get 16. And then divide by 4, and I get 4. Alright, so let's check it out. So up here, 3 times 4 is 12 minus 11 is 1. 5 minus 4 is 1. So this is both going to work out. So that's perfectly fine. So what do we think about square root equations? They're pretty okay, right? All right, next thing we're going to try is the cube root. And you kind of do the same exact thing. So instead of square rooting stuff or squaring it, we're going to cube it, cube root it. So the opposite of cube rooting is cubing, and the opposite of cubing is cube rooting. Okay, but we still do the same step. So let's look at A. A, in order to start these problems, everything has to be isolated. So you see the square root right here? Here's the square root. I mean, sorry, the cube root. Here's the cube root. You need to get rid of this negative 5 and the 4, okay, because you need the cube root to be all by its little lonesome. So I am going to add 5 to both sides. I still got 4 cube root 2x minus 1 and 12. Now divide by 4. So I have cube root still, 2x minus 1 equals 3. Okay, so again, what is the opposite of cube rooting? Cubing. Cubing. So remember, what you do to one side, you better be doing it to the other. This cube root and this cubed, they cancel out. So all you have left is a 2x minus 1. 3 cubed is 27. And then you just do your thing. I'm going to add 1. I get 28. And I'm going to divide by 2, and I get 14. Now I'm going to take that 14 and plug it back into the equation. So 2 times 14 minus 1. Cube root of 27 is 3. So 3 times 4 minus 5 is 7. So this one's right. No extraneous going on there. Okay, so again, all I did was plug that 14 right back up here for x and to see if it worked, and it did. All right, b, uh-oh, there's the little third. Okay, so up there it was a 1 half. So we know that the cube root, so say we we're looking at the cube root of x, that's the same thing as writing x to the 1 third. Okay, because again, the 3 is out here, and the, this has an exponent of 1, so it's 1 third. So they're the same thing. So if you need to rewrite it, go ahead and rewrite it. Now, when I look at this problem, 
is the exponent isolated? Or not the exponent, the exponential, oh my gosh, I'm losing it, guys. Is the cube root isolated? No, you got this 12 hanging out. Let's subtract it. So we have cube root of 9 minus x is equal to 3. Now, how do I get rid of that little cube root? What's the opposite of cube root? Cube in. Okay, so the cube root and the cube go away, and you have 9 minus x. 3 to the third is 27. I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides. What do I get? 18. Oh, I'm getting nervous. Yep, 18. Negative x. Divide by a negative, and that is how you get negative 18. Okay? Now, let's take this negative 18 that we got and put it right back in here. So I'm going to have 9 minus negative 18 um, to the 1 third plus 12. It's got to give me 15, and it does. So that one was fine, so it's not extraneous at all. All right, last one down here. Is it isolated? Yes, it is. So we can go ahead and start. How do you get rid of the cube root? You cube it. Okay, so the cube root and the cube cancel out, and you have x squared plus 4 equals 2 cubed, which is 8. And then you just do your thing. I'm going to subtract the 4, and I get 4. Then I, how do I get rid of that squared? Ooh, see, this is bringing back something from the example 1. We square root it, square root it. Now, when you square root, how many answers do you actually get? Two. You get a positive 2 and a negative 2, okay? Now, when we take the positive 2 and we put it back in, let's see. 2 squared plus 4. That is 8. The cube root of 8 is 2. So are we right? Yep, so that one works. Now let's put in the negative 2. When you put something into a squared, you need to make sure that it's in parentheses. So negative 2 squared plus 4 is also 8. And the cube root of 8 is 2. So that one works also. So down in here for the cube roots, there was no extraneous happening. Okay, what are we thinking about this? Okay, I mean, it's pretty straightforward again, guys. All you have to do is remember, if you're up here in the square root department, okay, then you square it to get rid of it. If you're down here in the cube root area, then you cube it to get rid of it. Okay, and then you solve it just like you would be solving regular problems. All right, guys, see you later.